suffering from poor blood circulation? I'm your humble host, the Dietrich Ram, and today I've got you covered with seven key tips on how you can increase and improve the circulation to your lower limb. So some of the signs and symptoms of poor blood circulation include pain within the leg and feet. There might be a bit of numbness, which can also be accompanied by a bit of tingling sensation, pins and needles. There might even be a bit of swelling. There might be a bit of cramps, particularly within the calf muscle. Sometimes you might even have nocturnal cramps when you're sleeping. The skin can be very dry, very flaky. And it's not too uncommon for conditions such as dermatitis or eczema to repair. The nails can be very brittle and they can also have a form of fungal infection in them. A loss of hair might be apparent on the big toe. This is quite a, an important sign and symptom because it's one of the first ones to be noticed. However, the cause of poor blood circulation can point out to a more serious problem it's because it's linked to conditions such as peripheral vascular disease, hypertension and diabetes. These cause narrowing and hardening of the arteries, known as arteriosclerosis. This is when cholesterol deposits form within the walls of the artery, thus causing damage to the blood vessels and restricting the flow of blood around the body. Another condition is known as venous insufficiency. This is when the veins become damaged and cause difficulty in carrying blood back from the leg and to the heart, causing valve damage, which can also lead to deep vein thrombosis and a blood clot. One of the main problems with poor blood circulation, particularly if you have diabetes, is that it can cause the skin to become more dry and therefore cause the tissue to break down much more easily. If the tissue breaks down, this can cause a wound and with delayed healing, this can turn into an ulcer and if that becomes infected and not treated properly or in time, that can lead to an amputation. Now without further ado, here are my seven tips. Number one, diet. Reduce sugar and salt intake because this can increase the blood pressure and is linked to the development of diabetes and heart disease. Aim to eat five fruits a day and uh, introduce more vegetables because these are packed with more vitamins and nutrients. Number two, exercise. Exercise is important because it increases your cardiovascular output. This can help to pump more blood around your body. So just by working out, three days a week, or just brisk walking half an hour. If you smoke, quit smoking. It's not only a disgusting habit, but it also costs a lot of money. Smoking causes damage within the lining of the arteries, as well as stiffness. The good news is that the damages of smoking can be reversed, but it takes many years. So quit today to reap the rewards and the benefits. If you suffer from varicose veins or swelling in your legs, then wear compression stockings. They help by improving the flow of blood from the leg back to the heart. By applying pressure to the veins and arteries, they reduce swelling and pain as well. Drink hot tea. A cup of hot tea helps by dilating the arteries and is also packed with antioxidants. The warm water helps by initiating and improving the blood flow around the body. Number six, reduce stress. Stress increases the hormone cortisol levels, which constrict the blood vessels. So do daily yoga, meditation. This can really help reduce the stress. Walking more. Walking more increases the blood flow around your body. So it's no rocket science that sitting down will just reduce the amount of blood circulation. If you can also get a standing up desk, that would also really help. Research has shown that if you walk around more and move around, 
you increase your lifespan by a considerable amount, much more than not doing so. So there you have it, seven tips on how you can increase and improve your blood circulation. I'm Podiatrist Ram, looking out for your health, providing you with authentic information. I hope you found this video helpful. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one.